Gonzalez. <laughs> I just want to continue to talk in Spanish, but I already did my video in Spanish. So Tishina Gonzalez here with Vida Activa, your favorite holistic wellness and self-development coach. And we're going to talk about how much fun I had the past two days with no electricity as I continue to work on emotional regulation. And I looked up an article that gives some great tips on helping you when things don't go your way. So it started out with a couple of quotes. We all have problems. The way we solve them is what makes the difference from unknown. It's not stress that kills us. It is our reaction to it by hand sale. So here are some tips on how to make it through. So first of all, take a step back and evaluate. When something bad happens, take a step back and evaluate the situation. Some questions to ask yourself. What is the problem? Are you the only person facing the problem in this world today? How does this problem look like at an individual level, a national level, on a global scale? What's the worst possible thing that can happen to you as a result of this? How is it going to impact your life in the next one year, five years, 10 years. So for me, it was having no electricity and a lot of people were experiencing it. But is this something I'm gonna worry about a year from now, five years from now? No, not really. So doing this exercise is not to undermine the problem or disclaiming responsibility, but to consider different perspectives so you can adopt the best approach for it. Most problems we encounter daily may seem like huge issues when they crop up, but most, if not all, don't have much impact on our life beyond that day. Then if you have to, but don't linger on the problem. So I definitely did this. I got a group of girls that we chat in a group chat and I went in there. I was like, I can't believe this right now. So if you feel very frustrated and need to let off some steam, go ahead and do that. Talk to a friend, complain, um, gripe about it, or scream at the top of your lungs if it makes you happy. At the same time, don't get caught up in the venting. While venting may temporarily relieve yourself, it's not going to solve the problem ultimately. You don't want to be an energy vampire. Vent if there's a need to, but do it for only 15 to 20 minutes, then move on to more productive steps. Realize there are others out there facing this too. Even though the situation may be frustrating, you're not alone. Remember, there are almost 7 billion people in the world today, and chances are that other people have faced the same thing before you. Knowing it's not just you helps you to get out of a self-victimizing mindset. So for me, there were lots, there were thousands, tens of thousands of people in Metro Detroit that were going through it with me. Process your thoughts and emotions. And this is one of the steps. This is really important for me because I tend to be the person who's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Cool, calm, and collected. But this is the part that I need to work on. So process your thoughts and emotions with any of the four methods. So journaling, I did a live on that recently. Did you see it? If not, hop on my YouTube channel right after this so you can check it out. As well as the amazing class that over hundreds of people have loved and saw on trauma writing. So write your unhappiness in a private diary or in your blog. It doesn't have to be formal at all. It can be an, a brain dump on rough paper or new word document. Or as we taught in the class, just 90 seconds can change everything by pulling out the notes section in your phone. Delete it after you're done. Audio taping, record yourself as you talk out what's on your mind. You might find it quite revealing. Meditation, so you guys know that I practice mindfulness. I did a couple of amazing classes at my day job. I was on a just lunch, like a greeting thing for one of the groups and one of the directors was like, he loved it so much and he's been practicing daily some of the deep breathing techniques that I share with him, which made me super, super happy. So favorite method to regulate your emotions. And its simplest form meditation is just sitting, lying still and observing your reality as it is, including your thoughts and emotions. Some think that it involves some complex mambo jumbo, but it doesn't. And I'm actually working on my third course now. It's going to be like 28 days of mindfulness, guided mindfulness with lots of different techniques. I'm super excited about that. Um, so I will have that to guide you guys in the future. So make sure you're always following my updates. Talking to someone, talking about it with someone helps you to work through the issue. It also gets you an alternative viewpoint and consider it from a different angle. Next point, acknowledge your thoughts. Don't resist your thoughts, but acknowledge them. This includes both positive and negative thoughts. Again, this is part of the emotional regulation, so that I'm working on. By acknowledging, recognizing the thoughts exist doesn't mean that you agree with them. But if you have the thought comes, wow, I'm stupid, 
Acknowledge that. If you have a thought that says, I can't believe this is happening to me, acknowledge that as well. Recognize that acknowledging the thoughts doesn't mean that you agree with them. It's simply recognizing the existence of said thoughts so that you can stop resisting yourself and focus on the situation at hand. Give yourself a break. If you're very stressed out by the situation and the problem is not time sensitive, then give yourself a break. Take a walk, listen to some music, watch a movie, or get some sleep. When you're done, you should feel a lot more revitalized to deal with the situation. So that's one thing I definitely did yesterday. I have some daily tasks that I'm trying to do in order to get through my course. But I was like, you know what? It's I need my laptop to do it. Um, I went somewhere. I couldn't find anywhere close <laughs> to actually work at. I had to work in my car, which was stressful. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to worry about doing those those tasks today and I'm not gonna feel guilty about it either uncover what you're really upset about a lot of times the anger we feel isn't about the world you may start off feeling angry at someone or something but at the depth of it it's anger towards yourself after that ask yourself how can you improve the situation our anger comes from not having control of the situation sitting there and feeling frustrated infuriated is not going to change the situation the more action we take the more we will regain control over the situation and the better we will feel. See this as an obstacle to overcome. So a book that I went through um, a few years ago, I think three or something, maybe three or four. Um, the obstacle is the way. Helped me a lot with perspective. Love that. And there's a quote here. Helen Keller once said, character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experiences of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened vision cleared ambition inspired and success achieved whatever you're facing right now see it as an obstacle to be overcome and every worthy endeavor there'll always be countless obstacles that emerge along the way these obstacles are what separate the people who make it from those who don't if you're able to push through and overcome them you'll emerge a stronger person than before it'll be harder for anything to get you down in the future next point Analyze the situation. Focus on actionable steps. In every setback, there are going to be things that can't be reversed since they have already occurred. You want to focus on the things that can still be changed, the salvageable things, versus things that have already happened and can't be changed. The only time the situation changes is when you take steps to improve it. Rather than cry over spilt milk, work through the situation. What's the situation? What's stressing you about the situation? What are the next steps that'll help you resolve them? Take action on those steps. After you have identified your next steps, act on them. The key here is to focus on actionable steps, not the inactionable steps. It's about regaining control over the situation through direct action. Next point, identify how it occurred so it won't occur next time. A lot of times we react to our problems. The problem occurs and we try to make the best out of what happened within the context while developing a healthy coping Mechanism is important, which is what the other helping points are on. It's equally important, if not more, to understand how the problem arose. This way you can work on preventing it from taking place next time versus dealing reactively with it. Most of us probably think the problem is outside of our control, but reality is most of the time it's fully preventable. It's just a matter of how much responsibility you take over the problem. So from an overall perspective, my problem was not preventable. It was thunderstorms and I lost power. I lost electricity, right? But the fact that I was running around, I actually let my laptop go down and I didn't worry about the battery until it just said, hey, your battery is low. And then I, my phone was at 20%. Then I left my house in order to try to find somewhere to plug in and I couldn't find any place. I went to two Starbucks, I went to Panera, I went to McDonald's, everywhere was closed maybe they didn't have power or they just didn't have enough employees that came in because their employees didn't have power so one of the things that i can take responsibility is planning better i should have thought you know um once i had a break earlier in the day i should have left earlier and then i wouldn't have had to like work in my car <laughs> and felt so much stress so there's always a way we can improve in the future realize the situation can be a lot worse no matter how bad the situation is it can always be much worse a plus point versus negative point analysis will help you realize that. So we already recognize all of our emotions and our thoughts, right? So now is the time to change our perspective, which is all good. We don't want to jump to that step immediately because that's like toxic positivity. We don't know that. Um, and for me, yeah, it was like uh, there were people who had 
their power gone for like four days, like Wednesday till today. There's people who lost their power a couple of times. Um, last time there was a storm, it was a tornado and I was in my bathroom for like <laughs> two hours because we needed to take shelter. I've had thunderstorms where I had a house and the tree fell down and was on my lines and I didn't have electricity for four days. So it could have been worse. It really wasn't that big of a deal. Power's back on now. Next point, do your best, but don't kill yourself over it. No matter how bad your situation may seem, do your best, but don't kill yourself over it. Life is too beautiful to worry so much over daily issues. Take a step back, give yourself a break if you need to, and do what you can within your means. Everything else will unfold accordingly. Worrying too much about the outcome isn't going to change or make your life any better. Pick up learning points from the encounter. There's something to learn from every encounter. What have you learned from this situation? What lessons have you taken away? After you identify your learning points, think about how you're going to apply them moving forward. With this, you clearly gained something from the encounter. You've walked away stronger, wiser, and a better person with more life lessons to draw from in the future. So that's what I want to share with you guys today. Applying it to the situation that I'm in. Here's some tips of how to walk through this process and get to the other side when things are not going your way. As usual, as you hop on here, give me a wave, a hi, hello. Let me know what city or state or country you're watching me from and hashtag replay if you're watching the replay. And if you're not following me yet on YouTube, make sure you hop over there right away because I got over a thousand videos on all types of health and wellness and self-development and over 200 in Spanish. So I'd love to see you at another video. Thank you guys. Have an amazing day. Bye.